Hi, this is Manos Berlakis, and this is video 8.4 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a video describing the various CTO crossing algorithms. There are several crossing techniques for chronic total occlusions that can be broadly categorized into undergrade and retrograde. Within each uh, category, there are subcategories for advancement within uh, the former plaque or intraplaque, or going into the extra plaque space, what we used to call subminimal, and these are the dissection and reentry techniques. So we do have undergrade wiring, we do have undergrade dissection and reentry, we do have retrograde wiring and retrograde dissection and reentry. And this emphasizes the new terminology. We used to use the term subintimal and intimal, but uh, it is often very hard to know what uh, is within the former lumen of the vessel and what is not. So the terms we're currently using are intraplug and extraplug. We do know that the more complex the CTO, as uh, illustrated by a higher JCTO score, there is a higher need for using advanced crossing techniques such as the retrograde and undergrade dissection reentry. However, this comes at a cost since ADR and retrograde do have higher risk of complications. So how can we balance the need for achieving high success while minimizing the risk of complications? And this is done by using CTO crossing algorithms. The first one of, was the hybrid algorithm that was published 10 years ago which provided for the first time a systematic approach to CTO crossing. It emphasized the importance of dual injection and careful review of the angiogram, paying a special focus on various characteristics such as the clear location of the proximal cap, the quality of the distal vessel and the presence of uh, collaterals appropriate for the retrograde approach, Based on those characteristics, either a primary undergrade or a primary retrograde approach was used. However, there was a lot of fluidity, and one of the key contributions of the hybrid algorithm was the emphasis on changing strategy. If uh, the initially selected approach did not work, it was important to change strategy to another one that might be more successful. Five years later, the Asia-Pacific CTO crossing algorithm was published. This uh, shared many similar components with the hybrid algorithm, but it included some other techniques such as IVUS guided entry for proximal cap ambiguity, and also emphasized the importance of parallel wiring if undergrade wiring was unsuccessful. The third algorithm in 2019 was the EuroCTO algorithm which is a little more complicated, but again emphasizes the importance of the dual injection and careful and geographic review. And the key characteristics remain the same. Do we have ambiguity in the proximal cap? Do we have interventional collaterals? And then uh, if we fail with undergrade wire escalation, we can either do ADR or the parallel wire technique. For every algorithm, there remains uh, a point of changing if things don't work out, change to a different strategy. However, there has been a lot of uh, convergence between different parts of the world and different operators. And this was summarized in a global CTO crossing algorithm that was published in JAC in 2021. And this algorithm again builds upon the previous algorithms and uh, breaks down CTO crossing into 10 steps, which we will discuss one by one. So first of all, dual injection and careful review of the angiogram. These are probably the two most important steps of uh, trying to cross CTOs. It has been uh, several years since the initial publication of the dual injection. And this is critical for the success and safety of the procedure. How is dual injection done? We first inject the CTO donor vessel we wait for a couple of seconds and then we inject the actual CTO vessel. We have low magnification so that we don't have to do any panning. And then we wait until the contrast completely clears. This helps us understand the proximal cap, the length of the occlusion, the quality of the distal vessel, and the presence of collaterals. Ideally, the review of the angiogram should be done by the entire CAT team with attendings, fellow technicians, uh, and representatives. And it should be done for at least 15 minutes to allow enough time for better understanding what is happening in the coronary anatomy. 
there are four key characteristics that we look for when we analyze the CTO. The first one is the proximal cap or the beginning of the occlusion. The second is the occlusion length and the composition of the occlusion. The third one is the quality of the distal vessel. And the fourth one are the various collaterals. There have been many scores developed, which will be discussed in a separate video, that uh, take those anatomic characteristics into consideration and translate them into a chance of, for example, CTO crossing within 30 minutes or the chance of being successful in CTO crossing. The most uh, commonly used CTO score is the JCTO or Japan CTO score that has five parameters, tapered proximal cap, calcium, bending more than 45 degrees inside the occlusion, more than 20 millimeter occlusion length, and previous failure to canalize the CTO. This is another one, the progress CTO score, that has four parameters, proximal cap ambiguity, lack of interventional collaterals, moderate or severe proximal torsosity before the CTO, and then uh, CTO in the circumflex. Ideally, when one starts uh, to perform CTO PCI, it is best to start with simpler occlusions, JCTO01, then go to JCTO2, and leave the more complex ones, JCTO3 or more, for later on in the learning curve. Coronary CT angiography is increasingly being performed and can be another very effective and accurate way for understanding the CTO anatomy. It provides very good uh, understanding of the proximal cap, if there is any torsosity within the lesion, if there is any calcification, and also allows very accurate assessment of the CTO length. And actually, in one study, the CTA derived parameters were much more accurate in uh, predicting technical success compared with the angiogram. This is an example of a favorable CTO with a nice tapered proximal cap, no calcium, short length. And that's the opposite. It's a very complex CTO, very long with calcification. And this was much harder to recanalize. Moving on to the third step of the global CTO crossing algorithm, which has to do with proximal cap ambiguity. This remains one of the most important angiographic anatomic characteristics of the CTO, because if there is proximal cap ambiguity, then there are different techniques that can be used to resolve the ambiguity, including the retrograde approach, use of intravascular ultrasound, and the move the cap techniques. There are different techniques that can be used in different scenarios. The global algorithm does not favor one approach over the other. It just uh, suggests to the operator to use the most appropriate technique for approaching the proximal cap ambiguity. Whether this is the retrograde approach or moving the cap of IVUS, that depends on the presence of collaterals, the experience of the operator in these techniques, and also experience in using intravascular ultrasound. This is an example of a right coronary CTO with multiple branches at the proximal cap. It is very ambiguous, um, which makes wire escalation very challenging. We use CT co-registration that can help sometimes clarify the ambiguity, but that didn't work out here. We used IVUS in a side branch, and now we can see that the wire is actually going within the occlusion segment. So IVUS can be very useful for allowing us to direct the wire within the intraplug segment. But then eventually, undergrade attempts failed, and the retrograde approach was used um, to allow successful decanalization of the CTO. So many ways can be used to approach proximal cap ambiguity, and the key ones are IVUS, number two, move the cap techniques, and number three, the retrograde. Step number four of the global algorithm is the quality of the distal vessel. The more diffusely diseased the distal vessel, the less likely for undergrade approaches to work, which uh, makes it more important to use the retrograde approach if this is feasible. And this is the step number five, which is, do we actually have options for retrograde crossing? Retrograde crossing can happen through bypass grafts, either patent or occluded, through septal collaterals and epicardial collaterals. Each one has advantages and disadvantages. Epicardial are probably the least desirable. They have uh, more complexity often and more risk of perforation and complications. Also, the larger the collateral, with the size being assessed using the Werner classification, the larger the collateral, the more likely for um, um, the retrograde crossing to be successful. Moving on to step number six, which is undergrade wiring. Undergrade wiring remains the most common initial approach to crossing CTOs. 
If it does not work, then the two major options are to use parallel wiring or IBUS guidance for re-entry or use undergrade dissection and re-entry. This is an example of parallel wiring. The original wire goes into the extra plug space and then a second uh, wired microcatheter are coming along and allow redirection of the other wire into the distal true lumen. This can also happen through a dual lumen microcatheter. In terms of undergrade dissection re-entry, the most common ways for dissecting in the undergrade direction is to use the knuckle wire or the cross post catheter. And re-entry is usually done using a device, most commonly the stingray, but increasingly the recross catheter is being used as well. Moving on to step number seven, which is the retrograde approach. The retrograde approach is a very powerful technique. It is performed into 10 steps and uh, allows uh, high success, but it does have, as we discussed before, high risk of complications. Step number eight is the change of strategy. If things do not work, we need to try something different. And that's, again, a key tenet of both the hybrid algorithm and every algorithm developed afterwards. This is illustrated on this uh, case series from the Progress CTO registry, in which the original approach was successful in about 50 to 60 percent of cases, and then there was need to switch to other type of crossing techniques before achieving a final success rate of 87 percent. Step number nine is the so-called investment procedure. So if things don't go well and we're ready to stop, one can do what's called an investment procedure, which typically is doing the star technique, advancing a knuckle distally until it re-enters. Sometimes it's also ballooning in the extra plug space. Ideally, we want to restore some undergrade flow, and then we bring the patient back in two months and try again to recanalize the CTO. The repeat attempt is often successful. This is an example of a CTO in which um, uh, there was some retrograde crossing with uh, various guide wires, standing of the RCA, and then we got flow in the PDA, but there is not really flow into a very large posterior lateral branch. It looks like we're in the extra plug space. So what we did is uh, we used the Gladius Mongo to essentially fenestrate that hematoma, and that uh, allowed the restoration of Timothy flow into the right posterior lateral. This is a form of the STAR technique. And then finally, step number 10 of the global CTO crossing algorithm is to, when to stop. And there are five criteria for stopping. One is long duration of the procedure. Typically, three hours is used as the cutoff. High radiation dose, typically more than five gray. Using a lot of contrast, more than three times the GFR. Having a complication or exhausting the crossing options. It is important to monitor continually the patient during a CTO PCI in case a complication happens. As described in the video on monitoring, there are 12 parameters that are continually being monitored to be able to ensure the patient is doing well without any complications. This is an example of some of the complications that can happen during CTO PCI. And then if uh, things don't work, it's better to stop than to keep on trying more complex techniques with higher risk that may result to significant complications. So to summarize, the global CTO crossing algorithm breaks CTO crossing down to 10 steps. Having a systematic step-by-step -step approach to CTO crossing can both increase the success of the procedure, but also decrease the risk of complications. Thank you.